Hi everyone. Today we're gonna do optimization of 3D functions. We already discussed uh, how 3D functions look like two videos ago and we also uh, discussed how to calculate partial derivatives needed to analyze uh, the 3D functions. Okay, but we're gonna start today actually with something very, very different. Okay, what do we see over here? What we see over here is a ball. Yeah, this is a regular ball I got from my own kitchen. And why did I bring it over here? Well, because ball is a very good representation of either maximum when we look at it, the ball this way or of a minimum if it's upside down right okay but look I'm gonna be talking only about maximum because everything that we're gonna discuss here for maximum can be easily uh, uh, it can, can, can be easily applied to finding minimum but with maximum it's gonna be all easier okay sorry for that okay and now look what why did I bring this ball look what you see over here on this piece of paper is a coordinate space here we have x-axis right and it's getting higher here and it's getting lower here and here the green one is a y-axis and as you see over here here it's getting bigger here it's getting lower and look this is where we usually start uh, when we talk about 3d functions look we've got a plane and look on this plane we now do not have one point for which we calculate value of y, and look, each spot over here represents a combination of x and y for which we can calculate different value, uh, a different value of z. Because, of course, we're still considering z equals f of x. Uh, I'm sorry, f, f of x and y. So, uh, now, look, basically, how is it going to work over here? Look, now, if we have some function, it will tell us that if I'm going to put any specific x or any specific y on this plane that you see over here in the coordinate space, I'm going to be able to calculate z. And z is going to be a height. Look, it's going to be some point uh, on above this plane or of course we could try below this plane right but let's focus only on what happens above look so basically we are getting some objects like this ball and uh, now we know that those objects just lie around this plane okay so uh, why did I choose a ball? Look, ball has actually some very nice properties. One of the property, uh, nice properties of the ball is that it, it is empty inside. Why do we need empty space inside the ball? Because remember, this is still a function for each now uh, a combination of a, a uh, if we're, now, for each combination of x and y, we, have, we need to have one uniquely defined uh, z. So, for example, object like that, as you see, could not be a function. Why? Look, because here, for x equal to x0 and y equal to 0, because we are on x-axis, we have multiple values of z. This is prohibited, right? We need to have uniquely defined values of z. And when we use a ball, assuming that it's infinitely thin, 
thin, right? Uh, it is. Uh, uh, it is definitely. Uh, 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 it is definitely a good representation of Maxi. Of course, because this is actual bowl from the kitchen, it, it has one very unfortunate drawback, because I hope you can see over here, it is flat. Look, I can put a ruler over here, and the ruler is not tilted in any direction, even if I moved it like this. Well, I need to move it far enough. But look, when we are discussing uh, maximum, look, we need to have a situation, uh, we need to have a situation like that. Uh, so, what do I mean by this? Is that on the top, uh, on the top the function is smooth and there is only one point uh, that is the highest, uh, uh, that, is the, uh, that is the highest, so it, it is higher than any other point. Of course, look over here, because this is a ball and it needs to stand, uh, it's a little bit flat, but we can imagine that this principle still applies. Okay, so uh, now what is going to be our task? Look, we are going to use derivatives in order to locate a specific value of x and y. As you see it, I hope you can, well, you can barely see it. So let me just maybe move it for a second. Here you see this x and y, zero. And for this specific pair of points, x zero and y, the value, so, is the highest possible. Uh, of course, in this neighborhood. But of course, we, in, in, in case of the ball, it is really easy to catch. And look, how are we going to find this ball? Look, I do not have a very uh, a, a good, uh, a, a good material here to show you the derivative, but I'm still going to try. Look, derivative is going to be, in this case, some line parallel to x-axis that is going to be tangent to this function and will have zero slope, right? Okay, so let me illustrate it like this. Uh, so here we have the line and look, if, if I'm over here and let's just say that line is on the, uh, it, it is exactly parallel to the, uh, uh, to the floor and it's touching the ball in just one place, right? So you see that we could have a line like this, which we are not interested in. We could have a line like this and this line, uh, it, it, well, the, in, in this case, with respect to x-axis, it's downward sloping. Here it's upward sloping. We want to have a line that again has a zero slope just like we had with 2D functions. Okay, and look, the, but there is one problem, because look, over here, the line is touching the ball just in one point, it's, par uh, 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 it's parallel to x-axis, so it has zero slope, but this point is not a maximum. Look, I can actually find a lot of points like that, and only the one at the top is the true maximum. And I can really see that this ball is not very uh, even. Okay, but maybe this is the, probably the problem with the table. Okay, and look, I can do now the very same thing from perspective of y-axis. I can calculate derivative from the perspective of y-axis and I would have a line over here that is parallel to y-axis and is touching the ball in just one place, right? So it's tangent to the ball. And look, again, I have infinite amount of lines like this. And this is something very problematic. Because look, what we were doing before, we were calculating derivative and we were equalizing it with zero. 
Now it doesn't work, right? Look, maybe what we were doing is going to lead us to the point where we can actually see uh, that, that this thing actually uh, can work. So, how, how, how can we go about it? For example, look, if I would be going from this perspective, what do I see at each of these points? Like these, we see that uh, each of these points from perspective of Y axis could be a maximum. But look, from perspective of X axis, the line over, he uh, 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 the line over here would be uh, upward sloping. Uh, so, uh, so we see that, judge, that we are actually finding here a point where, uh, uh, where we get a maximum from perspective of Y, but we are getting a, a, a point that is neither maximum or minimum from a point, uh, from the perspective of X axis, because then function is increasing. And look, if I would do this, the very same thing from the perspective of X axis, I would again got a very similar result. Huh. But again, I would see that from perspective of Y axis, we have uh, uh, this time also upward sloping line. Why upward sloping? Because uh, of course we are moving in that direction. But look, maybe because no, here we know where is the top of the ball, right? It is over here. So maybe there is something specific at the top of the ball that we cannot find anywhere else. And actually it is. Look, at the top of the ball, we have the situation in which we have zero slope from the perspective of X axis and we have zero slope from the perspective of y-axis and this is how we get first order condition uh, for the three-dimensional function we would require that both derivatives so f of x okay this is not a good idea maybe must be equal to zero and at the same time, f of y, so f y, so derivative with respect to y needs to be equal to zero. Only at the point where both of these derivatives are equal to zero, we can find a point that is either a candidate for a maximum, like the one we had over here, but also candidate for a minimum. Okay, I know that this is a very abstract and I've been actually doing this for the first time myself, uh, but I hope it gives you some idea on how to approach, uh, how to approach three-dimensional uh, functions and how to imagine their maximum and by the same token, their minimum. Okay, in the next video, uh, or in the next part, uh, in the next video, we're going to see uh, uh, how it looks in more traditional formal derivation. Okay, see you in the next video.